What's going on YouTube? So today we're going to talk about uh, the alkalinity in my tank. Um, you guys know that I have been doing water changes uh, solely with natural seawater, uh, maintaining a uh, alkalinity of about 7.1 to 7.3, just depending on the, the water that comes in. Um, and the tank has been growing fine. You guys see I post pictures on Instagram, tanks looking good. Um, I was doing my water changes uh, once a week. I would do about a 10 to 15 percent water change just depending on how I feel um, <clears throat> and I went out of town I had to go out of town and I missed a week of, of water changes uh, when I got back in town I didn't jump right on it um, got busy with work uh, on a project that I'm working on and uh, I ended up missing a, a, a full another week so two weeks of water changes I missed and so finally when I went to test my levels and I went and bought water and got ready to do a water change, my alkalinity had fallen from 7.1, you know, 7.3 range down to uh, 5.6. I wasn't surprised, you know, I knew that, you know, the alkalinity would have dropped a little bit, but I didn't think it would have, it would have dropped that much. But yeah, um, so, you know, I think I'm at the point now where um, I definitely know that I can maintain my tank with... Uh, Water changes, you guys have heard me say it before in, in one of my other videos that with the, the amount of water volume that I have in this tank, you know, this is a 60 gallon tank or 57 rimless. Doing a weekly water changes will, you know, will definitely uh, help me keep my levels where they need to be. Um, but just with life, you know, and, and everything I have going on and work and stuff like that, I think I'm going to have to, you know, set up some, some fail safes and some dosers and stuff like that. So... I'm going to take you guys over to the tank and just show you, uh, for the most part, all the corals look good, but uh, we do have a few that are showing signs of stress. Um, so let me take you over to the tank and show you guys what we got. guys so here's the tank so I just want to start off by just giving a little disclaimer I didn't clean the um, the glass before this video I kind of just you know want just shot the video you know in passing uh, so you know this is what the tank really looks like guys um, you know I usually don't clean the glass too often especially if I'm not gonna be around the tank if I'm just gonna be you know um, you know in and out of the house you know busy with work and stuff like that and you know I really only stop to feed the fish and then I keep going um, I try not to put my hands in the tank if I don't, you know, if I don't have to, especially if I'm not going to be around it. So uh, for the most part, uh, like I said, everything's looking good. Everything's, you know, still growing, growing nicely. Um, so I kind of just want to give you guys a quick little pass through from left to right, you know, so you guys can kind of see, you know, how everything's doing. Um, you know, this red encrusting Monty is, you know, really growing nicely. It's really encrusting uh, real fast. So it's looking really, really good. Uh, that's a piece I got from Mach SD. Uh, this green piece right here in the center, um, I got this from a, a guy off an Instagram. Um, he reached out to me and asked me if I could take the coral in. Uh, I think he was breaking down his system, you know, and I did. Um, and it was, you know, all brown when I first got it, but it's starting to get colored now. It's actually starting to get some blue tips. So I'm excited to see what that turns out to be. Here's my Sunset Millie and Manipora combo here. Um, you guys can see they've kind of uh, made a barrier between the two. Um, you know, and they've been growing like that for a while. In the beginning, the Manipora will try to encroach on the uh, Sunset Millie and you know, you can see where the edges are getting burnt. Uh, the Millie was kind of, you know, burning the Manipora back. But, you know, now they've, you know, you know, started growing in to, away from each other. You can see the Sunset Millie has a lot more branches on the left and then the Manipora starts wrapping around to the right. So, you know, they're looking good. You know, I know that uh, I, I need to 
move some things around try to make space this tank is really more of a grow out for me i'm hoping in the next few months i can you know move into a larger system and you know i'll have some nice size mini colonies that i'll be able to move you know over into the the new system so i'm excited about that here's where we start to see a little bit of uh tissue damage right here you can see this one coral right here in the center the tip of it um the, the, there's algae growing on the tip so uh, this was one of the first signs uh, that i started to notice that there was something wrong with the water uh, but now it's you know it's bouncing back the polyp extension is out again and the coral is looking happy so you know I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that that one you know has turned around and, and you know starts to grow again so here's the other one and this is the worst one that you know that i have in the tank you can see right there at the, up at the top you know i believe that's an aussie gold tort coral i believe that's what it is uh, you can see the base of it is receding i don't know if that's uh, stn um, i know it's not rtn because it's been like that for a few weeks but um, i never really saw any of this the the flesh of the coral peeling away it kind of just from one day to the next it was white and i think with stn you should see something kind of stripping away but i'm not really sure anybody can drop in the comments and let me know but um, you know, for the most part, it stopped. Um, again, like I said, it went from one day to the next. It was white, and then it kind of just stayed there. So, you know, if, they, if that continues to to rise up, then what I'll do is I'll just cut some of the branches off and uh, and try to save the colony. Uh, but for the most part, it's 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 been you know been pretty stable. Uh, this coral right to the next of it. It's uh, I think this is a blue voodoo. You'll see around the base of it you know, where it's starting to bleach out. Um, that I know it's bleaching because it still has polyp extension around the base of it. You can still see the polyps. They're just white. Um, so that one's just, you know, bleaching out. So I'm hoping, you know, with the, you know, parameters being stable again, you know, with me doing my water changes and stuff like that again, you know, we're, we're, we're back on top of it and it'll start growing. For the most part. Um, those are the only major issues, you know, I'll give you guys a quick pass through the fish. Um, here's my little pair of pintail wrasses. Um, they're not really a pair. I bought them separately at two separate times, but they've kind of paired up, you know, and they kind of hang out together a lot. I think they're both males. I'm not really sure. They're beautiful fish. You know, I love to have them in the tank. And we have my angels. There's my potter's angel. Um, a new addition to the tank he's been in for a few weeks now maybe a few months i'm not sure how long he's been in but he's been in for a while uh, in the beginning he i uh, used to scrap a little bit with my uh with my bellis angel and then uh you know i think they kind of figured out who was the boss which the bellis angel is the boss and you know they they you know they're fine you know they don't fight or anything um and the potter's angels doesn't pick at any corals doesn't pick at anything in the tank um, I did QT him for a long time um, and fed him a lot of brine shrimp, a lot of uh, mices, and just kind of overfed him. Um, and when I put him in the reef, he never showed interest. So, you know, I don't know if it had to do with me giving him the long QT or, you know, he's just one of the ones that just doesn't like coral. So, um, you know, for the most part, I'm happy with the direction of the tank. You know, I, I have started dosing this tank with uh, ESV Bionic. And I'll do a full walkthrough video of the equipment. Um, you know, I went ahead and put an Apex, a Neptune's Apex on the tank with uh, with an Apex dose system. And, I'm, you know, I'm dosing the tank now. I'm still doing the water changes, but I'm just using the dose system to uh, help me keep my parameters stable while uh, in between the water changes. I definitely know that I can maintain this tank with just regular uh, water changes, you know, but uh, just with life and everything that I have going on with work and, you know, I can't risk missing another water change and having the parameters swing, you know, as much as they did, um, you know, and, and using that dose system just in between the water changes is definitely a big help. I can see why a lot of people, you know, dose religiously. Um, I wish I did have a larger system and a way to set up a large auto water change. You know, I, I definitely stick you know, solely to that, but I'll keep you guys posted on, you know, on the new setup with the dose method and everything like that and what I have going on and, and you know, we'll see how the tank continues to progress. So, all right guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.